of all i wish you a very happy new year may the power may the presence of the lord be with us always today in the morning while we are praying we got this word of god from psalm 145 14 2 the lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season you open your hand satisfying the desire of every living thing the significance of this word of god is that you know this is not the, the first time we are entering into a new year we have entered last year to 2022 before that 2021 2020 like that we have entered into many new years with many resolutions the new commit new covenants new promises new decisions but we have found most of this time we could not reach anywhere near our promises and what we thought we could achieve it is because we have to look into thoroughly into the word of god which says it is the lord who upholds who are falling it is the lord who raises up all who are bowed down and it is his eyes that is looking at us our needs and it is he who gives us food in due season it is he who opens his hand and it satisfying the desire of every living thing it is not human effort it is not human beings is not government it is not people is not leaders it is god who has to do anything and everything for a transformation in our life that is why psalmist prayed again this is psalm 127 from 1 we read where king david categorically said if unless the lord builds the house those who build it labor in vain unless the lord guards the city the guard keep watch in vain it is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest eating the bread of anxious toil for he gives sleep to his beloved we have a beautiful prayer book the lord himself revealed to us the name for the prayer book the prayer book is called christ is all now this prayer book is available also in kinya rwanda in different languages that title itself the lord himself revealed and if we look into the sum and substance of the holy bible we understand christ is all is he who gives sleep is he who gives food is he who gives job is he who gives wealth is he who decides everything that's why people start building because if the lord is not building the house build build it in vain it is not human beings who give security if the lord is not giving security even the watchman watch in vain so the lord wants us in this new year to lead a christ centered life everything comes from god so the lord wants us to lead a christ centered life where if we put any human effort we think it is from the humans we get help it will not take place and it is god who can cause compassion maybe you are in a workplace where it is hostile psalm 106 verse 46 we are just going through that scripture then the power went off psalm 106 verse 46 he caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive now if we look at this word of god literally speaking see the israelites were under the slavery of egyptians and the egyptians mistreated them treated them below the slaves they suffered too much they never had any pity or compassion to the people of israelites but there came a time god himself put inside the heart of the egyptians to feel compassion to those slaves those captives and we know that they gave up all their ornaments and everything to the people whom they once mistreated 
he caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive sisters and brothers i have several experiences when we go through a difficult time and we pray for those who oppress us we, we pray from our heart those who oppress us we pray for them and god will cause kind of pity and compassion in their heart towards us because every life comes from god this is what we read in john chapter 1 verse 3 not one thing was born without him he is the life there is no one in the history no one ever said i am the life but jesus said i am the life and the resurrection see he was in the beginning with the god all things came into being through him all things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being see if the word of god categorically says that christ is hiding inside everyone he is the one who causes anything any blessing any gift any grace this is what we read in colossians chapter 1 verses 26 then 27 colossians 1 26 and 27 the scripture says this was a mystery that was hidden for generations what is the mystery that mystery is that christ is in, inside you see the mystery that has been hidden through the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints to them what chose to make known how great among genders are the riches of the glory of this mystery which is christ in you the hope of glory that means if not one thing is created without him not even genders pagans unbelievers atheists they are all created by god the the life in everyone is from jesus christ that's why jesus himself said john 14 6 i am the way the truth and the life no one in the history ever said they are the life jesus said i am the life again john 11 25 john 11 25 jesus said i am the life and the resurrection if we look at this word of god we come to know there is no one who can just claim they are the life they cannot just say jesus said to her i am i am the resurrection and the life so if jesus is the life who is inside everyone things are easy you know sometimes married people say my husband is a very difficult person my wife is an unfaithful person my children are not listening to me my father is against me but you have to know there is someone beyond something above your father your husband your children your employer that is christ who is hiding inside them so if you walk through christ if we pray to christ if we ask jesus he can influence people cause compassion cause pity cause god's favor and this is the most important thing that's why when we pray things will change we have have this testimony we, we were in a retreat here in divine retreat center and a wife she came with her husband and she said her husband was never going to church did not believe much in praying but she did not give up she prayed and one of her intention was to bring her husband for a retreat she prayed and prayed and prayed then god answered her prayer the husband came for a retreat and it is when he came for the retreat his eyes were opened he said it was the time he was getting married he was making a confession since then he never thought it's important to make a confession until he came for a retreat he listened to the teachings of the word of god and he became a converted man now it all happened because the wife stopped advising the husband she herself said in the testimony i prayed to jesus i told jesus i believe that my husband is baptized that you are inside him that you can influence him he is also your son you came to save Zacchaeus, who was lost in a way you called soul who was persecuting you 
you have converted different people why can't you also convert my husband even pagans we know the husband of monica patricius he was a gentile an unbeliever but when god touched his heart when monica prayed when monica prayed god answered her prayer her husband got baptized and became a christian before his death not only that her son agusti an alcoholic who was into adultery who was into empty philosophy got converted so sirach chapter 35 was 21 we read because the prayer of the just man pierces the clouds and it will not desist until it produces fruit so if we don't give up the scripture sirach Thirty-five, twenty-one. The prayer of a just man. See, the prayer of the humble pierces the clouds, and it will not rest until it reaches its goal. It will not desist until the Most High responds. The one whose service is pleasing to the Lord will be accepted, and his prayer will reach to the clouds. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. See, when we ask the Lord to help us. to help our family to help our workplace to intervene he is going to answer us so in this at the beginning of this 2023 we are just sharing to lead a christ centered life sometimes we focus on our power our influence and we try to look at people who are rich influential higher than us but the lord wants us to go through him alone because he is the only way he can influence people without being attached without being attacked without being persecuted or oppressed see if you receive a human help the problem is that after all they may oppress you after some time they may demand it back they may tell you that i helped you why don't you help me back that is why in the scripture that we read in the book of psalm this is chapter 20 where the scripture says that there are some who this is 27 psalm chapter 20 verse 7 some put their trust in chariots some put some take pride in chariots and some in horses but our pride is in the name of the lord our god in this year 2023 are we going to take pride in chariots it symbolically means in our power in our position in our name in our fame in our property land wealth and riches and in some horses that means in ado in authorized in superiors in kings in leaders in politicians some people take trust in them the scripture says but in whom you take pride do you take pride in the name of the lord you know the very thing that we take pride will be the very thing will torment us will hurt us there are people who are very proud of the company they work they boast about their company and the same same company will hurt them so much because that company has become an idol remember no company can help us it's only christ Christ alone. There are people who boast about other people who helped them. Even priests. Do you may boast about a priest? This priest is very good. Imagine you don't know when this priest is going to pierce your heart. Let human effort is worthless. Sirach two eighteen. Sirach two eighteen. In this year twenty twenty eight. Twenty twenty three. Let us put our trust completely on Christ alone. This is Sirach chapter two, verse eighteen. This is a very important scripture, where the word of God says that those who fear the Lord prepare their hearts. Ah, uh, yes, it is seventeen. In this version, it is seventeen, not eighteen. Sorry, those who fear the Lord prepare their hearts. 
and humble themselves before him let us fall into the hands of the lord but not into the hands of mortals for equal to his majesty is his mercy and equal to his name are his works see the lord is telling us that let us be humble before the lord and let us fall into the hands of the lord not into the hands of mortal see let us maybe you are jobless you have financial crisis you have poverty you have difficulties you have different type of ailments but let us kindly not fall into the hands of the people i have seen people have been conned because they wanted to go to go abroad they wanted to go to get a visa they wanted to get work permit they wanted to get a job so they go and meet some people and then these people collect money from them they promise many helps of course they sometimes some people help some they don't help those who help also there are also people who cheat even those who help also demand too much you have to pay them a portion of their your income too much human oppression too much human oppression that is why in 1 corinthians 7 21 saint paul is teaching his people you are bought with a big big price don't become human slaves to human masters you are bought with a huge price so don't don't even lean with uh, don't become slaves of human masters so in this new year as we are going to take a decision before the lord see the scripture says let's read that 1 corinthians 7 21 where you were slave and called do not be concerned about it even if it can gain your freedom make use of your present condition now and then forever for whoever was called in the lord as a slave is freed person we, we continue downwards uh, see verse 23 you have bought with a price verse 23 you were bought with a price do not become slaves of human masters wherever you are please kindly repeat this word of god verse 23 sorry it was not 21 23 1 corinthians 7 23 you were bought with a price do not become slaves of human masters you were bought with a price Mo sisters and brothers it's only jesus who shed his blood and purchased you no human purchased us it's only jesus he bought you with the, with the with his blood the price that he paid to say to save you is his blood let us never become slaves of human masters at least in this year 2023 let us never become slaves to human masters that's why in proverbs sometimes 1922 sometimes people justify that you you know i have this friendship i have this friend i have this person because i am poor i need help i need some assistance i cannot do it anything but the scripture clearly says what is desirable in a person is loyalty loyalty to the one who bought you with a price what is desirable in a person is loyalty and this our god is capable of making you rich capable of giving you a job capable of giving you a life partner capable of giving you a child and it is better to be poor than a liar your master is advising you it is better to be poor than a liar are you trying to avoid poverty by making human friendship human attachment human respect human affection it will make you a liar it will make you a slave you know those who commit to sin is a slave jesus categorically said so our human attachment our human uh, human affection always leading us to a kind of a slavery that's why he wants us to get out of that and he wants us even if we remain poor better the lord is telling us to be a poor man to be a poor person which is better than a liar better than a human slave a human slave that is why king david when he was going through a very hard time 
King David went through a very hard time and he committed a sin and the Lord warned him that because he took the census, he is going to be affected. Then David prayed, he tried what to do, what is the solution? Because the Lord is going to, he is going to accept the punishment. Then he made this statement, 1 Chronicles 21, 13. First Chronicles 21, 13. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 13. When he came to know, he has offended God. This is the statement he made. Then David said to God, I am in great distress. Let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. But let me not fall into human hands. Then David said to God, I am in great distress. Let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is very great. And let me fall and let me not fall into human hands. Sisters and brothers, I have a testimony. This testimony, I have shared it before. But I think for this new year, it adds a very big value to what we are reflecting. I had broken a thing when I was in the minor seminary. You know, if you break something, you have to restore it back. Because in the minor seminary, we are many and we will all will not be promoted. I had a very good friend called Paul in the minor seminary. We are very good friends. And Paul told me, whenever I am in a trouble, I will, he will help me. And whenever he's in a trouble, I have to help him. One day we were cleaning the, the classroom. And while cleaning the classroom, Paul was cleaning the classroom. I was cleaning the chapel. Every day, four to five, we had to do this cleaning work. Then while I was in the chapel, Paul came to me and called me. He told me to, he needs a help. He made me to promise that I will help him. So I told him I can help you, but why do I promise? He told me good friends will promise first. Then they, they will not ask any question. So I thought Paul is my good friend and I can help him. And he told me it's a small thing. So I accepted. Then he took me to the classroom where he was cleaning. But he showed me while he was cleaning, he broke a window glass. And he's telling me that I have to go and tell the superior that it is I who broke the window glass. I was shocked because I told him if I tell him that, I will be sent home and I will get punishment. And my father has no money to pay it because he had told if we break anything, either we have to pay it back or we will be discontinued, will be sent away because the, this tendency of breaking is never accepted. So I told Paul, then Paul is telling me, uh, Anthony, this time you help, next time I will help you. Because Paul insisted and he told me that he will help me whenever I am in need of help, I went to the superior and I told him that, Father, I'm very sorry I broke the window glass. He became very angry. He stood up from the chair and he said, since the day you came here, Anthony, I have seen a destroying spirit in you. If you have broken the window glass today, what else will break tomorrow? I cannot just trust in you. Then I told him, Father, it, uh, I, I, it was a mistake. I'm very sorry. I will never repeat it. He told me to write down what has happened. He gave me a piece of paper because they need evidences of the things we have done so that they can rightfully send us home. So he made me to write down. So in tears I wrote. Then he's telling me, Anthony, I don't want to see a crocodile tears. You broke the window. You are not writing something that you have not done. You, you say that if you break anything else, you will be sent home. So I wrote the letter with a lot of pain. When I came out of the room, I was seeking for just one person called Paul. I called him Paul, Paul. He came to me and I told Paul, Paul, things were not as expected. My superior has found a destroying spirit in me. Now, I don't know what to do. Paul touched on my shoulders and he told me, Anthony, don't worry. I will help you when you are in need of my help. I, I will help you. Thank you so much. So I thought, anyway, Paul is there to help me. I was consoled. But I told you, every day we have the cleaning. After another one week, this time I was cleaning the refectory. 
and we have to also clean all the plates the where we eat the food so i was cleaning the flask where we keep the milk for the priest then while cleaning i you know there is we have to smell it whether it is clean so you have to use a long brush with the soap while cleaning it with the soap several times it slipped because of the soap and it fell down and it broke with a very loud noise not only the flask even my heart was broken because i already got the last warning i got a, i wrote a letter the moment the flask is broken i came to know now this is end of my vocation then i remembered paul who promised to help me so i called paul from far and i i'm going and searching him where he is so that he take up the responsibility this time so that i am escaped so i'm calling him paul 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 but i don't see him anywhere i don't find him then he is coming and he is telling me antony are you the one broke the flask because he heard the some noise from far i told him it broke it fell down from my hand then he is telling me immediately antony don't waste time go immediately report to the superior before he comes to know from somebody else you go don't waste time the right paul this time it is you please help me then paul is telling me antony what are you talking who told you to break the flask i cannot just go and tell then i told him but paul you told me you will help me it's you who broke the window glass and i accepted it i never betrayed you and you told me when you break something you will protect me now you have to help me otherwise i will be sent home then paul is telling me antony what are you talking window glass is very cheap flask is very, very expensive who told you to break that flask is very special they brought it from germany now you cannot just tell me to go and report you go and tell without wasting time i told paul but i will be sent home paul is telling me but antony who told you to break the glass you are so careless even i have seen a destroying spirit in you how can you just break your flask paul disappeared walked away now i don't know what to do where to go the only friend i had the friend whom i helped he has disowned me now i came to know i have to pack my things to go home because i myself had written a letter that i will go home if i break anything else then i i just remembered why did i come to this seminar is it because of paul then i remembered it's only because of jesus it's only because of jesus i did not know anybody else other than my lord jesus and then after packing my things before going to the superior i decided to say goodbye to jesus who brought me there who tolerated me i went to the chapel and i saw a prayer book that prayer book actually i did not like in the past that prayer book is called stations of the cross because it's a long prayer i never thought it is my prayer but that day i thought this is my prayer i took the prayer book i started to pray the stations of the cross from the introductory prayer i was kneeling in tears or knees i completed the 14 stations and the 15th one the resurrection of our lord jesus christ i just told jesus one small thing give me one more chance i am very sorry forgive me give me one more chance sisters and brothers after this prayer i went to the superior and i told him father now forgive me this time i knelt down and i told him father this time i broke your flask i am very sorry forgive me he just came and touched on my shoulders and he told me andani get up get up don't worry it was an old flask we will buy a new flask don't worry go in peace the moment he said go in peace i got up and i disappeared before he changes his mind because i know he had forgotten that i am the same person who broke the window glass he just forgot and that's the way eventually i became a priest sisters and brothers i came out of the priest room the superior's room and i went and i told paul god saved me god saved me then paul apologized i told paul don't worry the lord was teaching me a lesson that i should only trust in him 
not anybody else. Today, we are very good friends. And Paul was telling me, Anthony, why are you wasting your time making friendship with me, trying to please me, trying to come up to me? I cannot save you. I myself in trouble. I am also a seminarian like you. I need God's help. Then what about you? That's why the Bible scholars say the Bible that is having Old Testament and New Testament. The central message of the whole Bible comes from Psalm 118 verses 6 to 8. Psalm 118 definitely was 8 particularly. That word it comes at the middle of the Bible and they say that is the central message of the whole Bible. The scripture says it is better to put trust in God than in mortals. 118 was 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. Let us repeat this word of God seven times together. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. See, that's the, when we unveil this word of God, actually the Lord is telling me it is better to take refuge in the Lord than in Paul, my good friend. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than in your biological father or your mother, your friend or your aunt, your sponsor or your benefactor. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than in superiors, in employers, in your own community members, in your so-called best friends. This is God's word. This is the Bible scholars say after learning the Old and the New Testament together, they say that this word of God has something very special. And in this new year, 2023, the Lord just wanted to tell you, my son, my daughter, in whom you put your confidence. Is it in your boyfriend, in your girlfriend, in your husband, in your wife, in your daughter, in your son, in your son who is abroad, who has a job? Please don't. This is a prayer basically of King David. He was a king. He, he has all the reason to put trust in his efficient employers, efficient employees and efficient soldiers. But no, he came to know Psalm 127, 1 again, if the Lord is not building the house, the builders will do it in vain. Again, Psalm 149, 3, Psalm 149, 3, it is the Lord who gives victory to the humble. See, it is uh, three and four, three and four. Let them praise his name with the dancing, making melody to him with the tambourine and lyre. Verse four, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Is there any human who takes pleasure in your success? They may feel sad. When you succeed, they think it is their failure. When you get a promotion, you see it is their promotion you have stolen. There is no one other than your God who takes pleasure, takes delight in his people. He adorns the humble with the victory. It is he who gives you victory. Maybe in this 2023, you are entering into an important career in your life, important class in your life. Maybe you are entering into form three, form four. Maybe you are going to have your dissertation. You are going to complete. This is your final year, this 2023, very decisive year. And you have to admit it is the Lord who adorns the humble with the victory, not your professors, not your teachers, not the lecturers. It is God. He alone takes pleasure in you. He alone takes delight in you. Let us lead a Christ-centered life. Let us take off our attention from human beings. As Isaiah chapter 2 was 22, we read Isaiah Chapter 2, verse 22, what is mortals? They are just mere breath in their nostrils. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 22. Let's also repeat this word of God wherever you are. As the scripture is telling us, 
but turn away from mortals who have only breath in their nostrils for of what account are they turn away from mortals who have only breath in their nostrils for of what account are they they are just breath in their nostrils the moment the breath is removed the life they become lifeless let us keep our trust in god who is infinite eternal who is the same yesterday today and forever who is always there for our welfare let us believe in that power of the lord who takes light in everything that is there for us also let us read the book of job this is book of job chapter 5 verses 12 and 13 job chapter 5 12 and 13 job chapter 5 12 and 13 see he frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands achieve no success he takes the wise in their own craftiness and the schemes of the wily are brought to a quick end see the lord frustrates the devices of the crafty see through crooked wicked ways no one can succeed because it is the lord who gives success so people think that if i try this way if i go this way if i try if i change my documents do some kind of things it can no if the success come from god he wants us to totally depend on him him alone and let us pray for that grace let us ask the lord's intervention for this year 2023 to depend only on god lord i beg you to have mercy on me for the times i put my trust in human beings proverbs 19:21 proverbs 19:21 we read that many are the plans of the of the people but the purpose of the lord alone be established 19:21 many are the plans of the people see sometimes you feel that people are planning different type of things the human mind may devise many plans but it is the purpose of the lord that will be established the human mind may devise many plans that means your employer can devise to chase you away your company can uh, de- decide to terminate your contract your officer can devise to throw you away your own people family members relatives can devise plans to take away your land and property can chase you away from home remember it is the purpose of the lord that you will be established believe it no one who can destroy your life god is there to defend you that's why in psalm chapter 21 verse 11 we read psalm 21 11 that many uh, even if they plan evil even if they devise mischief they will not succeed repeat this word of god three times for this 2023 let this be your conviction if they plan evil against you if they devise mischief they will not succeed your company your office your congregation your community your own people around you even if they plan evil if they devise mischief they will not succeed if you trust in the lord if you put your trust in lord jesus christ who gives you success who alone gives you victory as we read in sirach chapter 10 verse 5 sirach chapter 10 verse 5 book of sirach chapter 10 verse 5 human success is in the is in the hand of the lord see human success is in the hand of the lord and it is he who confers honor upon the law giver human success is in the hand of the lord put it inside your heart insert this word of god it is not in the hand of any human it is not in the hand of your university or in your college or in your class teacher it is in the hand of the lord i am a witness to that and i can say from the bottom of my heart it is god god alone who gives success not any human 
he can overlook our mistakes and he can give us success we take this opportunity to truly thank daniel and scarlet for all the effort that they are doing for the spreading the kingdom of god for the whole year these since the covid started we are going through this deep struggle but our team members managed to overcome all those phyllis who is helping us in coordinating all these programs and all our bible nursery teachers including charlotte we have shefali we have rima phyllis we have many who are being part of this ministry helping us and we have to share with you our program for 2023 here from kigali we have a retreat with the pilgrimage and we want to welcome all of you to come and join every month we have actually today we had our pilgrimage to our lady of kibeho every month we go to this great and beautiful pilgrim center of mother mary who appeared here in rwanda actually rwanda is a holy land and kibeho is a holy place <coughs> we want to welcome you for that every month last week we have a retreat in english it's a pilgrimage retreat so we welcome you for that retreat too and thank you and we beg you to pray for us even me i need prayers with father joby we are two priests here please kindly pray for us for our mission we need a lot of prayers that will be your greatest help for our mission here may almighty god uh, truly bless you bless everyone who are involved in it even we have a mission in french we have our, our team members who are helping us our priests helping us in preaching the word of god in french we also have our mission in kisohili we have our team members like anmareka helping us saverin helping us nadin helping us our priests helping us let all our team members be mightily blessed may almighty god give you all the blessings and favors in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and pray for the construction of our divine retreat center which is to be started we need your prayers thank you so much